telegram delivery. I'm not quite old enough to remember telegram deliveries arriving. The name lives on though, and the telegram social media service provides a bot API that is accessible using web services. I can use this to deliver telegrams to my Pico W and get replies too. Hi, I'm John, your concierge to the world of the Raspberry Pi Pico, robotics, IoT, and other fun tech. Please remember to subscribe and join the community. This video continues a few I've done recently on using interesting web services. The Telegram Bot API is right up the top of my list of useful web services. Like all internet hosted web services, it's secured using TLS, Transport Layer Security. I'm using WolfSSL to handle that, and this can be tricky. For more on building web services and securing them, you can check out my course on the Udemy platform. I'll put a link in the description. If you like this video and it helps your learning or your projects, why not buy me a virtual cup of coffee or lunch or even a holiday? Use that super thanks button just below the video. And please hit the like button on, on the video and subscribe for more. I do appreciate it. I'm actually quite new to Telegram, but then there are so many social media tools that it's not entirely surprising that I haven't actually used them all or use them all religiously anyway. Um, Telegram is really a messaging service. I guess its most uh, close competitor would be WhatsApp. It allows you to do direct messaging between another individual or of course to actually talk to a group. Telegram's really interesting service is that it has a web service API and that web service API is designed for bots and therefore we can actually use our Pico and make our Pico a bot. The other really interesting thing about that protocol is that it's very much a pool based. So the Pico initiates requests to say, actually, is there any messages for me? And then can initiate any responses or replies. But actually the Pico can choose when it actually calls out to Telegram. So it could actually go to sleep in between. Now that makes this really quite a nice protocol for a battery powered device. I could not produce these videos without help from my sponsors. Today's video is sponsored by Wolf SSL. I first came across Wolf SSL when I was working on an IoT project and trying to secure MQTT. I needed a library to help add TLS to my communication. Wolf SSL has a great library for just that, under either open source or commercial license, with support too. I've been using it on Pico and Pico W projects ever since. Wolf SSL have other great products too, including a crypto library, a secure boot process to validate firmware, SSH clients, and TPM20, a trusted platform module library. Whether you're a hobbyist or are building commercial embedded systems, Wolf SSL's products are fabulous accelerators. Having them as a sponsor, I am sure I'm going to showcase some of their products over the coming months. So please do check out Wolf SSL. Before we can start working with a bot, we need to actually um, inform Telegram that we have a bot, and we do that using the Bot Father. And the Bot Father is an interactive uh, chat session where we can actually create a new bot. And we then just answer a couple of questions telling it what the username and what the bot name will be. And then it sets it up and gives us the access key, which is the key that we're going to need to provide in our web services to use this as a bot. All of the code that I'm going to talk about, and indeed the runs in this example, is of course shared on GitHub for you. It does need a few little environmental variables provided to it. So these are things like your Wi-Fi SID and password so that it can connect to Wi-Fi. That uh, I'd provide through environmental variables, the names are on the screen. And the Telegram bots key, which we got from the Godfather. Plus, we're going to also need the authorization ID of um, you or your user um, on Telegram. That's tricky to get, so all I've done is really read that off of the sessions. So we're going to focus on three separate web services from within Telegram's uh, bot API. And the first one of these is the Telegram's commands.
So this says what commands the actual bot will respond to. And it takes a array of uh, command and description uh, pairs. And it uses those so that it can actually give you a menu of what the commands you can set and, and send to your bot are. And that's the first thing that our bot is going to do. It's going to set that command. The next one, and really the more important one, is the Telegram update service. So this is what we call to get all of the responses from Telegram to tell us what's going on. And uh, every time we make this request, we get the next set of, of messages down from Telegram. That can, of course, be an empty list, of course. So we're going to pass two queries into this or two parameters into this. One is to limit it. So I'm going to limit it to the number of requests that I, and messages that I'm going to allow Telegram to send me at a time. That's because if this is too high and we suddenly got bombarded, our Pico is not going to cope. And secondly, the offset, which is basically one plus the um, most recent message received from Telegram. And it's what Telegram uses in order to understand that, yes, we've received it and we're moving on to looking for the next thing. So the message that comes back is actually quite detailed and has a number of options in it. Really, for us, we're actually interested in the fact that there is a message there. Um, it's from a given user and we will grab that uh, ID in there that I've hidden out because that's the ID that I want to compare to see if it's me or not. And then we're also interested in the chat session and particularly the text. And the first text that actually will, you'll get in any session with a Telegram uh, bot is the command start. The final web service that we're going to look at is send message. And this is basically to send a response back. So it, it takes two queries here or two parameters here, the chat ID of the session that we're in, so who we're actually chatting to, and the text message that we're sending across. And that's what we're going to use in order to send some data back. So let's have a look at the code. So over in the repo, let's just have a look at the code. And let's start in the source folder with the CMake um, lists.txt file. And I just want to point out that, yes, there's a few CPP files involved in this project. But actually, there's also quite a lot of libraries. Um, this is running under free RTOS. We're going to give to, uh, the Telegram bot the power to run as a task within FreeRTOS and running FreeRTOS also gives me access to some more advanced IP within the LWIP library mainly on but I have the ability to have sockets and it's those sockets I'm going to actually use with the core HTTP in order to give me uh, web service connections basically and I'm going to secure those with Wolf SSL because I'm going to need TLS connections in order to actually interact with Telegram. All of that is actually inside a little library that does some of that stuff in a, um, using um, the Pico WWS client library there. And finally, I'm going to need some JSON stuff as well. So I've got a couple of JSON libraries that I'm using here for parsing JSON and building JSON. And finally, we're going to get the temperature off the Pico, so I need hardware ADC. The other thing that's in here which is really important is I need some um, definitions to find for the compiler uh, from environmental variables to make them nice and uh, secure and means I'm not checking them into uh, GitHub. So my Wi-Fi SID and password I'm putting through here so that they're being pulled from the environmental variables. Uh, in my environment and so is my telegram key for this bot and my um, authorization ID for, for the user that I actually want this telegram service to respond to because I'm not going to respond to everyone I'm only going to respond to me so that's in there as well right let's actually have a look at this telegram bot then and what is it going to do because Telegram boss is firstly, it's, it's an agent. So in my world, that means it's going to be an active task. It responds to a Telegram interface. That basically just means that I can throw this around um, uh, as a object and allow things to send messages through it. Um, so 
I'm basically creating it and giving it some buffer space uh, um, and I'm then allowing uh, myself to send messages to a given chat session to add commands. Now commands are really important because commands are what we're going to respond to. So if a command is in the list here, then it's something that I can actually respond to and send a response back out to my client on Telegram. And we've got some other stuff we got, you know, we're going to check authorization, which is just basically going to do a, um, a quality check between that ID that, that of this session and the ID that I've actually put in via that CMake file a second ago. Um, we can send commands. Uh, that basically we've seen is, is sending the list of things that will be offered as options to, to send as part of that conversation. And do update, which is really what's going to do all of the work. So let's have a look at these uh, commands then, and let's have a look at what's going on on this side. So let's start by having a look at this uh, run. So this is the main loop and the main thing that runs when Telegram runs. And the first thing it does is it sends out the commands to Telegram to tell it these are the commands I'd like to respond to, please. These are what to offer to anyone talking to me. And then it's just going to keep doing uh, our updates uh, at 10 second intervals. So send commands is basically just hitting the URL we saw earlier. And I'm using a little uh, trick here in C and C++ that um, quotes are, can be across multiple lines and uh, they basically just get joined together because each, from each line that is quoted. So that way I can actually put in the Telegram bot key in the middle here and it will actually all get built up nicely into um, the URL without me having to do any string manipulation. And then what I'm basically going to do is send over the list of commands. Now I'm doing a little bit of uh, cleverness here. I'm using an, uh, a subclass that is managing my commands set there, uh, the telegram bot commands object. And that's actually going to put over a uh, JSON object to describe what the command and descriptions are. So that's all I have to do for that one. And then how about update? Well, updates really actually not that dissimilar. Firstly, we again, we're just going to call this uh, URL for the get updates. And this is what we're calling repeatedly to see if there's anything for us to deal with. So uh, we're going to be careful and protect ourselves a little bit from being attacked. So we're going to limit the number of requests or, or, or messages that we can pull down at a time. And I've set it to just five here so I don't overflow my buffers too much or at all. And um, the other thing we put in here is if I've got one, I will put an offset, which means that actually we'll keep just churning our way through that list. And Telegram will remember I've seen this stuff. If I send an offset back, it knows I've seen it and it won't give it to me again. And then we issue that request. Most of the rest of the stuff here is actually then JSON processing as we actually uh, step our way through the JSON to try and pull out what is the results uh, list? Um, what is the update ID? Because I'm going to use that in order to give me an offset next time I recall this. Um, is, is there a message there? And what is that message? Who is it from? Is, is that ID someone that I'm actually authorized to, uh, to work with? If it is, then can I get the value of the message? And can I check to see if I've actually got a command that will respond to that message? And if I have, then I will respond. If I haven't, then I won't. Or, or I will say it's actually unknown. Um, if authorization fails, then actually I will passively ignore all messages from unauthorized users. So let's have a look at the commands then, because that's what's actually going to respond. So a telegram command is basically just going to have a ID, a description, and the ability to execute given a Telegram interface, actually something that it can actually send out a message on. And it's also got the chat ID there so it can send out a message back to the chat session. And then I've got two examples of this. The first one is uh, the test example. 
and test has basically an idea of test and it says for the description what is executing is going to do on this test is it's just going to basically send out a message saying this is a test. The temperature one's going to do a little bit more interesting. It's got the command is stroke temp and its uh, description is the Pico's temperature. And it's basically going to go and calculate the temperature from the onboard temperature sensor on the Pico. And then it's going to construct a message telling me what the Pico's temperature is before sending that back. So let's have a look at those examples. So let's start a session with our bot issuing the command stroke start. And if we look over on the Pico, it's actually seen that stroke start be given to it as part of a message. And of course, because it's coming from me as an identifier that it knows of, um, it can actually respond to that. So let's now um, try a different message. Let's try that stroke test message and see what the test response is. The Pico is going to get the stroke test message and it's going to respond with a boilerplate answer. And finally, let's ask the Pico what the temperature is. And again, because it's coming from me, it will respond. And so it will go in and look at the onboard temperature and respond and tell me what that is and it will have seen that stroke temp request. The Telegram service is fairly easy to work with and well documented. After a little exploration of the protocol, I was able to quickly get the demos up and running. There are a lot of other APIs available as well within Telegram bot set. And this included things like group management of group conversations. I've not looked at any of those. If you do look at them and you build anything with them, let me know, I'd really like to see some more examples. The one concern I have with this model is security. Although I can protect my bot to only respond to requests from known entities, I'm still open to a denial of service attack. My Pico really can't handle very many requests and therefore it will be quite easy to disrupt the service by sending lots of messages. What I need is to set it up in such a way that I've got an allow list for the bot. I've not managed to find a way of doing that. If you have, please do let me know. I'd be really interested. Just leave a message in the comment or reach out on social media. If this video or any of my videos helped you out, why not buy me a virtual cup of coffee or lunch to say thank you? There's now that super thanks feature live on the channel. Just click the button. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoy the video, please hit that like button and please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next video. Goodbye for now.